thank you very much for welcome again today to my youtube channel please do not forget to subscribe do not forget to like do not forget to comment and share okay today let's look at the Bernoulli's equation or Bernoulli's principle um, Bernoulli's principle states that for a fluid which is actually incompressible the fluid should be incompressible should be non viscous for any fluid which is incompressible and non viscous and it is undergoing a steady flow the flow should be steady another name for steady flow is a laminar flow or streamlined flow and not a tabular flow so the flow must be a steady flow for any incompressible fluid and is a non viscous fluid which is undergoing a steady flow pressure of that liquid pressure of a liquid plus the kinetic energy kinetic energy by unit volume plus its potential energy by unit volume is always a constant is always a constant at all points along the spring line so that means our Bernoulli's principle states that P plus a half rho, a half, let me say M B square out of the, the volume plus M G H out of V is equal to a constant. So in this case, we shall have P plus a half mass out of the volume to give us this. V squared plus uh, density G H is equal to a constant. So in brief, this is the Bernoulli's principle for a fluid which is incompressible and is non viscous, which is undergoing a steady flow, pressure of a fluid plus its kinetic energy by unit volume plus its potential energy by unit volume is a constant throughout the streamline. Let's see how we can derive this value is this derivation. Uh, let's have an incompressible field which is flow for this case. I'm going to have something like that. I have this is like a pipe. I have that. I'm going to have this and I'm going to have this wheel. I'm going to have this like that. I am going to call this is a B triangle. A B triangle of zero potential. We are taking this as a arbitrary level, but of zero one potential. I have, let me have this as F1. The first F1 and the reference point here. This one I will call it H1. Then, cross section area of this I will call it A1. Let this one be A1. And the speed of the field in this region we are going to call V1. V1 is the speed of the field within this region. I will have this as x1, x, then I will have this as x1. And then I will call this, this distance change in x. Okay, that region is still spread by the field. I will call this as y, and then I will call this as y1. And then the velocity of the field here is v2, and then this one is V2 and the cross-sectional area here, I call it A2. So, and this way, the atmospheric pressure is acting towards F2 and the reference point is 
x2 meters from that point. So, if the fluid which is originally occupying x and y is displaced in such a way that it now occupies a region of x1 and y1, it means in that case, it means when F1, when F1 actually moves a distance till the X, when the first F1 has pushed this fluid, because we are saying let's have a fluid originally by X and Y being displaced pushed by X1. Then it means that as this force has pushed this, this force is the one responsible. This is atmospheric pressure at this point. And it is the one responsible for pushing this towards the side. So once there's has moved the distance changing x, then the fluid, it is now the fluid that moves, moves a distance of k. This distance is a distance changing y. Moves a uh, distance changing y, but it is moving against f2. Against against f2. So in this case, we shall get the total work done by the field. So, total work done in this case, we shall have a uh, uh, total work done will be total work done will be F1 changing X minus F2 changing Y. This one, the total work done, I call it changing W. Be equal to, and this is equation one. Remember, if that is the case, if we have displaced this field to from here, which was from here to this one, then it means the same mass of the field which was occupying the region x x one is the same mass that will occupy y y one because it is a steady flow. So, um, um, since the fluid is undergoing steady flow. Then, then we have uh, the mass of the fluid. Mass of fluid originally between. Uh, between x and x1, between x and x1 equal to mass of fluid uh, between y and y1. And this is all equal to f. So in this case, you realize that the fluid which originally had the velocity v1. Okay, at this point, at arbitrary IH1 is replaced by a fluid having velocity V2 and is having hybrid IH2 from the reference level. So in this case, we are going to get the gain in kinetic energy, then we also get the gain in potential energy of the fluid. So, gain in kinetic energy, energy. I am going to call it, I am going to call it as kinetic energy gain. This means the gain in kinetic energy. So therefore,
minus P2 times V equal to a half MV2 square and then minus a half MV1 square plus MGH2 minus MGH1. So I have read the thing that this V is the volume, but what is volume? I can decide to divide all through by the volume itself. So I'll have divide all through by V, I'll have the divider by V, the divider by V, and divide it by V. I also divide it by V, I divide this by V, by V. So you see that I'll have this is going to be P1 minus P2. Will give me this is going to be mass over the volume is actually density. So I'll have this is going to be a half density times V2 squared. Then I have this one also mass over the volume is still density minus a half density V1 squared plus mass of a volume is still density G H2 minus density G H1. It's the same thing, so the density is the same all throughout. So I'm going to collect the uh, terms which look alike. One, 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 one together, two, two together. So you will see that here we this implies that I will have P1, and then I will have plus. This one will come to this side, will be a half row V1 squared. Then plus row GH1 is equal to P2, I bring this one this side, plus a half row V2 squared, plus, and then finally I have row GH2. So you see that P1 plus a half row B1 square plus a row G. This is pressure plus. This one is kinetic and kinetic volume at the other starting point, which is point between X and X1. Then plus its potential energy per unit volume is equal to P to the pressure point Y, which is at point between y and y1 and then plus its kinetic energy per unit volume plus its potential energy per unit volume. So therefore, this implies that I have that P1 actually P plus a half rho V squared plus rho G H is equal to a constant. And this one is our bar noli square, or what we call bar noli's principle. Thank you so much. Thanks for following. Keep following.